In this lecture, we will extend the complexity of a phase diagram by introducing an additional phase that is solid. This is the many things which we are going to look at here uh, will be dealt with uh, in a manner that is analogous to the way we thought about liquid vapor transition. So you should have a good handle on liquid vapor transition before you start with this, because that kind of intuition which you built there is going to be extended to uh, solid liquid vapor transitions. So let's just as a recap, let's see how we did these experiments involving liquid to vapor transitions. So we have done this already, so I will go over this quickly. So we considered five stages, one, two, three, four, five. That corresponds to compressed liquid, two corresponds to uh, saturated liquid, then three is the two-phase region, four is saturated vapor, five is superheated vapor, right? In all these cases, the pressure is held a constant. Pressure uh, above the uh, pressure above the piston, the ambient pressure that is held a constant, while we are supplying heat, uh, the temperature can change. But in this region, all the heat that is supplied between state two to state four, all the heat that is supplied goes towards the latent heat. Just uh, the liquid gets transformed to a vapor. So <clears throat> in an analogous manner, so we can also do uh, this phase transition using uh, a different set of condition. So here what we are doing is we are keeping temperature constant, but we are decreasing the pressure. We're decreasing the pressure. All right, so uh, when we are removing these weights, that means we are decreasing the pressure. We are taking a trajectory, something like this. Right? So there are many trajectories we can take depending upon the temperature. Uh, so this is what we call an isobar. These are all isotherms. So this is a way of implementing the liquid vapor uh, transitions. So one thing I would like to emphasize here is the specific volume which we are mentioning uh, along the x-axis, it looks like a, it, it is an intensive variable. It's, it's like density. Um, it has uh, greater utility when we are thinking about single phase region. Okay, so I'll clarify the sentence uh, as we go to Gibbs phase rule and so on. But what I'm trying to say here is uh, in both in the single phase region and in two phase region, when you say pressure or temperature, when things are at equilibrium, uh, the entire phase is at the same intensive variable. There is pressure and temperature. Uh, here, if you have a single phase liquid, the pressure is uh, the same throughout the system. Uh, temperature is same throughout the system. Even the two phase system, uh, the pressure of the liquid is the same as the pressure of the gas. Temperature of the liquid is the same as the temperature of the gas. However, when you say uh, specific volume, Specific volume is well defined here, right? So specific volume is well defined in the single phase region here. However, when you say, when you're talking about a two phase region, uh, th there are only two specific volume. There is a specific volume corresponding to a liquid and there's a specific volume corresponding to a, a gas okay, or a vapor. So when you indicate a point here, it's actually an average of a specific volume of the liquid and specific volume of the gas, okay? So this particular point uh, is not an useful way to think about intensive properties in the two-phase region, okay? This is a point that needs to be emphasized, okay? So, so not all of the intensive variables are the same. P and T, pressure and temperature have a certain status, but specific volume um, has a different status, okay? So we will see in certain phase diagrams 
and Gibbs phase rule as we progress in this class. All right. So uh, we are now going to move from liquid phase transition, liquid vapor phase transitions to solid uh, liquid vapor phase transitions. So these are the two things which we have already seen in this uh, lecture and in the previous lectures. So, uh, okay, so what is that? So this is what we want to be uh, introducing. So let's see how we can think using the concepts or the intuition which you have built in liquid vapor transitions. So what is that we see here? So here, when we did this experiment, that is we did the experiment under isobaric condition. You, you were supplying heat uh, and you were increasing the temperature. So the lower the pressure uh, for the, under which the transition is, uh, taking place. What is different? So the difference between the specific volume of the saturated liquid and saturated vapor is greater and greater. So as we lower the pressure, this specific volume of the saturated liquid keeps on decreasing, right? So, so here uh, at a higher pressure, there's a greater specific volume for a saturated liquid. And here, uh, the, at a lower pressure compared to P2, there is a, a smaller specific volume to, to a uh, uh, for the saturated liquid. Same thing here. So when you try to do this in isothermal condition, as the temperature is decreased, uh, the difference between a saturated liquid and saturated vapor in terms of specific volume is uh, larger and larger. So as you keep lowering the temperature, what happens is the specific volume of the liquid which you have is decreasing further and further. So at below a particular pressure uh, or below a particular, instead of thinking about pressure and uh, temperature, it's useful to think in terms of specific volume. Below a particular specific volume, this liquid no longer exists as a liquid. It always prefers to be in terms of a solid. That's what is happening when you come to uh, solid uh, phase transitions involving solid. So let's uh, understand this. So we can do, look at two things. One is this line and this line. So what is to be noticed, this compared to this line, this line is not that slanted. Why is that so? because the density difference between liquid and solid is much less compared to the difference between a solid and a vapor or liquid and a vapor. That's the main reason. Okay, so this line is uh, just by analogy, just is like this line. And this line is like this line. So let us use the, this kind of an intuition, I mean, the, what, the intuition which we have built from this kind of system to understand these two lines and the region in between them. So you have uh, a solid, which is like the liquid here, right? So you have a two-phase region and a single-phase region, like you have a two-phase region and a single-phase region, but all these things have lesser uh, specific volume. So at, when you have lesser specific volume, what is that you're going to have? You're going to have a solid instead of a liquid, right? So, uh, so that's the way to think about the entire uh, thing, right? So entire the, uh, phase transitions involving a solid. All right, so, okay. So the, and then when you consider this line, uh, this is not very different from here, okay? so. So here you have a solid, here you have a liquid. So it, here the two-phase region is a liquid vapor, but here it's solid vapor because you are looking at a, a lesser specific volume. Okay? So as you keep decreasing uh, the pre uh, temperature, right? So here, how did we go to the, the, these lines? We did the phase transition. We were looking at the phase transition at lesser and lesser temperature. As you go to lesser and lesser temperature, what you have is a solid vapor 
uh, two-phase region instead of a liquid vapor two-phase region. So, so, uh, so this is the way we describe how we conduct uh, this set of experiments. Uh, so in a way, instead of uh, thinking about a liquid, you can think about a solid, all right? And, and you're decreasing pressure, okay? So the analogy and intuition, uh, the analogy between this and th this region is uh, strong. And the intuition which you build here uh, is also useful here, except that you have the uh, notion or the way we think about a solid is a, a, a phase which has very less uh, specific volume compared to that of a vapor or a lesser specific volume compared to a liquid. That's the most of the solids obey uh, this uh, notion of uh, the solid phase having lesser specific volume or greater density compared to a liquid. All right, so that's the way to think about the entire thing. Uh, we will go to a few other points. Okay, for example, here you have a critical point, but you don't have seem to have a critical point. This can extend all the way. Uh, yeah, you don't have a critical point here, but this line uh, doesn't uh, stop. Um, so there is a difference. You see, here we are explicitly indicated uh, a critical point, but we are not uh, explicitly indicating uh, a critical point here. We will see why. Okay, so uh, as we progress uh, in the some other forms of uh, phase diagram. So if, right? Okay, so one additional point is in the two phase region, uh, here there is only liquid and vapor, but in these cases involving solid, you can have a vapor in equilibrium between three phases, a solid, liquid as well as vapor, all right? So this is the new uh, feature that comes in as soon as you start thinking about phase transitions or equilibrium uh, involving solids. Uh, one particular notion you should uh, uh, notice is a liquid phase is not possible below the triple line. So he, here you have the triple line for the reasons which I've elaborated just a few minutes ago. Liquid phase is not uh, possible below the triple line. Okay, so uh, the reason is uh, more to do with specific volumes, right? So that's the way to think about this. Liquid phase don't uh, uh, exist below the triple line. That's the observation you have to notice here. So having said all these things, not all solids are the same. Uh, one of the interesting properties of water is that uh, the solid ice, okay, so when it uh, liquid, typically when a liquid converts to a solid, you would think that the density is going to increase or the specific volume is going to decrease. However, uh, water uh, luckily, for many reasons, we'll elaborate just in a few minutes. Uh, the, this uh, there is a slight difference in the phase diagram between a typical uh, liquid and water. Uh, the reason for this difference is that when ice melts into a liquid, okay, so you would anticipate for a normal liquid the volume should expand, right? But in this case, actually, uh, that's not so. The volume contracts, okay? In the, in the sense that when you have a liquid uh, freezing into a solid, okay? Uh, th then there's an expansion. So that's why if you have um, a glass bottle, completely fill it with water, okay? Liquid water and put it in a freezer. This is a very dangerous experiment because the liquid upon freezing will tend to expand. So there is a chance that the glass bottle will blow up, all right? So, or even if you fill a plastic bottle with water and freeze it, the plastic bottle will deform uh, in a way to allow for the expansion of, um, of uh, liquid water uh, into ice, okay? So that is, uh, different, okay? So there is a small difference in 
uh, the phase diagram because of this uh, reason. So what is this? What is that you have to no notice here? So here we said that uh, this is the solid phase, this is the liquid phase. The solid phase has lesser specific volume compared to the liquid phase. But here, uh, the solid phase has a greater specific volume compared to the liquid phase, okay? So uh, that's the interesting part. So if you have a liquid, uh, as I said in this experiment involving freezer, when you put the liquid, a bottle completely filled with uh, liquid upon freezing, that system will tend to expand, okay? So uh, that's an interesting feature. This has played a very, very important role in uh, sustenance of human life and any animal life and so on, okay? Because for this reason, ice uh, floats on water, right? So this supposing, uh, so you have seen even this has been uh, uh, this of importance in when humans uh, moved, migrated from one place to another uh, place involving continent and so on. The, it is uh, pu uh, humans walk across ice surface, right? They, if this had not been so, uh, ice, if this not, this uh, this feature of ice floating of water is of extreme importance. Okay? So if you have uh, a liquid column, uh, in this case, when the temperature decreases, uh, there is ice floating on top. Uh, if, if it had been other way around, the freezing would occur from the bottom. So if you have oceans which are freezing from the bottom, the sunlight would be absorbed by water. It would never go uh, to the depths to melt uh, the ice. So, uh, so that's a very, very important feature. Uh, so because ice is floating only on the top, the sunlight typically falls on the ice first, okay? So it can melt the water, me melt the ice into water, and upon co uh, when it becomes colder, it the, that water can get frozen, but the frozen ice is floating uh, because it has lesser density is flow compared to water. It is floating on top of uh, ice is floating on top of water. Right. So this is a very very important feature. So uh, this I water phase diagram is probably the single most important phase diagram. Okay, in human civilization. I, in an earlier class, I mentioned iron carbon diagram as the second most important phase diagram. Uh, I would say that uh, water phase diagram is the single most important phase diagram for humans. So, okay. So we are trying to view the phase diagram in a slightly different manner, okay? So here, uh, and in the previous case, we were looking at pressure and Specific volume, okay? Again, I emphasize that specific volume is useful in a single phase region, but in a two phase region, specific volume is just an average between two phases, okay? So that is something you want to understand. So here, what is that? This is another version of the phase diagram. All the information that was available to you in your previous phase diagrams, when you plotted P was a specific volume, P was a specific volume is available. So this, what is that we are plotting? We are plotting pressure in the y-axis and temperature in the x-axis. So these are, uh, this is not the important uh, thing to notice. We will focus on these two lines. So the only difference between this uh, and this line is that here the substance contracts on freezing, uh, substance expands on freezing. So this is like water, this is like most of the liquid. Uh, but that's not the important point. Okay, so what is important is there are some general features. This is what is called the sublimation line. So this separates a solid and vapor. So this is a vaporization line. It separates liquid and vapor. And this vaporization uh, line ends at a critical point. Okay, so this is ending at a triple point, but this is ending at a critical point. Uh, so beyond the critical point, the liquid and vapor are not, there's no difference between the liquid phase and the vapor phase, okay? The, re the reason why this line ends at the critical point is because the symmetry of the liquid phase and the symmetry of the vapor phase is the same, okay? That is both have 
uh, continuous translation symmetry, okay, as opposed to a solid which has discrete translation symmetry. Okay, so we will try to uh, look at this phase diagram in greater detail. Supposing you are having uh, you are at same pressure, but you are trying to increase temperature. This looks like you are moving, uh, uh, you are crossing this via just a point. Okay, so actually this point is much more rich in uh, features, right? So what is this point? So if you look at this, so when you are trying to cross like this, so you are having the pressure uh, is the same. Okay, it's an isobaric transition, but you are increasing the temperature. So that corresponds to this entire uh, point can be expanded in a PV diagram along this region. As you keep increasing the temperature, here you have just a liquid. As you keep increasing the temperature, you hit this line, you have uh, a liquid forms the first uh, bubble of vapor, and then more and more liquid gets converted to vapor as we transverse from this point to this point, okay? So this single point in the PT diagram is a line in the TV diagram, all right? So uh, as we cross this, we are going from this point to this point, and then uh, we are uh, increasing the temperature, okay? So this is a very important point. So uh, this is more complex, PT phase diagram is more complex. Uh, it has more additional details uh, that are uh, not very easily evident, okay? So you have to connect uh, the information which you obtain from TV diagram, PV diagram uh, to a PT phase diagram. So let's look at the other uh, way. So you are trying to do a uh, phase transition, that is liquid vapor phase transition at under isothermal condition. The temperature is the same, but the pressure is being changed or pressure is being decreased, okay? So the way, again, to relate uh, is you have a single phase liquid and then you seem to have uh, gone to another single phase vapor by uh, just cutting across this line. You, this single point is an entire line, okay? So you have to understand this. So here you have temperature, you're doing it in an isothermal condition. So you are decreasing the pressure along this line. So you, you continue to be in a single phase region like what we are here. And then when you hit this point, this point corresponds to the entire line. So as we cut across this line, you're moving from first a single phase liquid that has formed a vapor, and then more and more vapor gets formed. Uh, eventually there's no liquid left, okay? And you go to a single vapor phase region. So this, when you cut across this, you are actually moving across an entire line. Okay, so this is a complexity uh, you have to understand clearly by comparing all the three phase diagrams, all right? So I would like to emphasize a few points here. The two phase line, okay, in a, a PV diagram or in a TV diagram, okay, is a point, okay, is represented as a point in the PT diagram. This is a very important uh, observation you should uh, try to understand. And then what is this triple point? Triple point is a point where there are three phases in equilibrium, solid, liquid, and vapor, okay? So if you had seen the, this triple line, okay, in a PV diagram is actually what appears as a triple point in the PT diagram, okay? So uh, the logic of this is very similar to what we did, okay? A line in the PV diagram appears as a point in the PT diagram, okay? So uh, understand that. These are all very subtle points. So phase diagram is not just a matter of uh, data presentation, okay? There's a lot of things that are happening. You have to understand how, what kind of experiment is being done to see these phase transitions. So the textbook mentions uh, um, without much elaboration, uh, simple compressible substance. Okay, so it can be on the first read, it can be confusing. So we'll elaborate this more, but just to, uh, you know, briefly, I'm 
trying to say what is a simple compressible substance, okay? So in the simple compressible substance, there is no surface electric and magnetic effects, electrical and magnetic effects. So, so here in the single phase region, you, this can be considered as a uh, simple compressible substance. Again, this can be considered as a simple compressible substance, okay? But when you go to this two phase region, this is no longer a simple compressible substance because there are surfaces uh, that are present. Okay, so we are not considering electric and magnetic work, but we will look at it at a slay uh, uh, when we introduce this notion of work and so on. Okay, so just to elaborate briefly, uh, a simple compressible substance means there is no complexity of phase transition, no surface and electric and magnetic effects. So phase diagrams can get complex. Uh, so this looks much easier. This uh, solid phase looks very clean. Uh, so, but even for water, okay, water is very, very interesting, a uh, bit more interesting because of ice. Okay, uh, Ice is really cool Okay, in terms of thermodynamics. There are many, many phases of ice. Okay, So ice, when you talk about ice, it's not just one ice. All right. Uh, so again, so this uh, the liquid vapor ends at the critical point okay? because in this region uh, there is no difference between uh, vapor uh, and uh, liquid. Okay, so if you want to go to if you want to do the transition of liquid to vapor, it can be done in two ways. One is what you call a continuous phase transition. So when you start from a liquid here, and then if you move in this trajectory, okay, there is no interface, okay? So you it you start with the liquid, then you go to this region and you come to this region. So somehow you've gone from liquid to vapor uh, uh, via what is called a continuous phase transition without seeing two phase region, okay? Uh, but if, however, if you want to go from liquid to vapor, uh, cutting this line, that is also possible, okay? But here you will see a two phase region as you go from liquid to vapor, as you transform from liquid to vapor. Uh, along this trajectory, you would never see a, a two-phase region. So that's called continuous phase transition. When we introduce what's called free energy, we will, uh, uh, the, uh, what I've described uh, qualitatively, we can quantify use mathematically also. So, all right. So we'll uh, understand slightly few more things about uh, sublimation. So what is sublimation? So we are looking at a phase transition, uh, solid to vapor uh, phase transition. Again, uh, when we cut across this uh, in a PT diagram, uh, actually it corresponds to a line, right? So in this phase diagram, what is happening? So there is an equilibrium between solid and vapor. Okay? As the temperature is increased, more and more solid gets to uh, the vapor. Uh, so, again, so the one thing which I want to emphasize is you don't see a critical point for this phase transition. I mean, what I'm trying to say is for a solid and vapor that ended at a critical point. But for this phase transition, solid to vapor, you don't see a critical point. That is because the symmetry of the solid phase is different from the symmetry of the liquid phase or the fluid phase, okay? It's fundamentally a different substance because uh, solid has different material properties uh, compared to a fluid because solid has a discrete translation symmetry. So sublimation versus vaporization, you have to understand the difference. Vaporization, we are referring to transfer of a liquid of a phase that has same symmetry as that of a vapor, whereas sublimation, you are moving from a solid phase to a vapor phase. Okay, so uh, you can ask the question: uh, Why do some things sublime and something else do not uh, sublime? Okay, for example, you might have seen uh, naphthalene balls. Okay, so these uh, go from uh, the phase transition is directly from a solid to a vapor. Okay, so in some temples, uh, you uh, you would have seen camphor. Okay, so when you uh, the camphor that doesn't really, uh, it just goes from a solid phase to a liquid phase. The most uh, important uh, sublimation ma material which you might have seen in birthday parties is uh, carbon dioxide, okay, uh, dry ice. Uh, why is this so? Uh, 
so it is very interesting. So if you ask the question, uh, why, when would uh, substance show this sublimation behavior? Uh, the reason why some substances show sublimation behavior but are not others is because the triple point is well above the atmospheric uh, pressure, right? So atmospheric pressure, uh, it's about 100 kilopascal. Okay. So here the y-axis is in a logarithmic scale. So uh, if the triple point is well above uh, the atmospheric pressure, uh, th this substance will uh, sublime. Okay. So yeah, sublimation in dry ice, dry ice is actually carbon dioxide. Right, so it is. Uh, if you look at freezers, okay, so when and for birthday parties, when you get ice cream, okay, so typically it is cooled with dry ice, right? So how, why, why do you want to do that? Okay, because when uh, it the dry ice is used for uh, keeping something cool, uh, when it warms up, you don't want to be liquid slushing around. You don't want liquid slushing around. Directly, solid carbon dioxide gets transformed to uh, vapor phase, okay? So that's a very important uh, utility of uh, carbon dioxide having a triple point with pressures, uh, triple point pressure being much above the um, atmospheric pressure, okay? So if you, the, the single answer for why something sublimes and not others is uh, you have to compare the uh, triple point pressure and triple point for that particular uh, uh, substance with the atmospheric pressure. So with this, I stop here. Thank you.